wal mustahdi wa na'udhu bihi min shururi anfusina wa min sayyi'ati a'malina innahu man yahdi Allah wala mudilla la wa man yudlil fala hadiya la wa salatu wa salam ala al mab'uth rahmatan lil alamin sayyidna wa habibina Muhammad wa ali wa sahbi wa mawala all praise and adoration are due to almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the lord of the universe we thank him and eulogize him for giving us the opportunity to witness today's program uh, we thank him for the greatest blessing uh, which he has bestowed on us and that is the blessing of islam and uh, this is what uh, a lot of prophets in fact all the prophets of allah pray that um, allah should give them you can see prophet ibrahim all of them all of them were asking allah that they should all die in islam that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has chosen us for Islam. We didn't choose Islam. Allah chose us for Islam. We have every reason and every cause to say Alhamdulillah. Uh, we want to start today's program in the name of Allah, the most beneficent, the most merciful. I start by greeting everyone in the best manner of salutation, saying Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum wa salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. So I want to welcome everyone to the 1442 Ramadan lecture of our dear school, Crescent Schools. I want to particularly appreciate the guest lecturer, Justice Abdurrahim Sai, for being so early. Uh, he was in ahead of time. The Rafaullah Peran for being so time conscious. We appreciate him for that. Also, Aladi Kudaj and everyone who was in early. Early, Jazakumullah Peran. Uh, without much ado, we start today's program, inshallah, with a short prayer session, and this is going to be led by no other person but one of our stars in the school, and the person of Al Ustaz Abdul Wahab Muhammad Al Jami. Bismillah, Ustaz. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. We thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We appreciate him, we adore him, we glorify his name. We speak some blessings be upon the Prophet of mankind, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Prophet Muhammad, his household, his companion, and those who thread his path with the Prophet. May Allah continue to be our guide. May Allah continue to strengthen us on the path of Islam. We thank Allah for making us Muslims, and we pray that He grant us Shifa on the Day of Judgment. And grant us the highest place in paradise, Jannah al And then um, we also appreciate the month that we are in, the month of Ramadan. May Allah make us gain the benefit and the rewards of this month. May it not be uh, evidence against us on the day of judgment. Our guest lecturer, we appreciate him. We welcome him, and then may Allah continue to be with you. Likewise, every one of us will pray Allah continue to strengthen. <laughs> Now, Ustaz Raji, you can unmute yourself, please. Alhamdulillah, I mean, I mean, I mean, having committed to this program into the merciful hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we are sure that today's program is going to be a success, inshallah. The Dr. Lockheer and Ustaz Jami for the opening dua. May Allah accept the said prayer. Allahumma amin. Next is recitation from the Holy Quran. We need to drink from the vast and inexhaustible uh, fountain of uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which is the Quran. And to do this for us, uh, two students from our school, one is handling the Arabic recitation and the other one is handling trans the, trans uh, the translation. And to handle the Arabic, Text is Hassan Abdurrahman. Hassan Abdurrahman, you can mute yourself now. Bismillah. 
أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء فاتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وهو الذي أنشاكم من نفس واحدة فمستقر ومستودع قد فصلنا الآيات لقوم يفقهون بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ولو شاء ربك لآمن من في الأرض جميعا أفأنت تكره الناس حتى يكونوا مؤمنين بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا وجعلناكم شعوبا وقبائل لتعارفوا إن أكرمكم عند الله أتقاكم إن الله عليم خبير بسم الله الرحمن ഹിമ്മിയുഹ <laughs> ജസാക്കുമുള്ളൈറൻ <laughs> وبلغ رسوله الكريم ونحن على ذلك من الشاهدين now over to you jami farida you can give all the trans the translation jami farida bismillah i take refuge in allah from the accursed devil in the name of allah the beneficent the merciful trust in the savior one all mankind fear your lord who created you from one single soul and created from it its mate and dispersed from both of them many when a moment and fear allah true whom you ask on another and the wombs indeed allah is ever over you an observer trust to an arm verse 98 it is he who has produced you from a single person here is a place of sojourn and a place of departure we detail our signs for people to understand trust to you know verse 99 And your Lord so willed, O prophet, all people on earth will have certainly believed, every single one of them. Would you then force people to become believers? Try to address verse 13. O mankind, indeed we created you from a male and a female, and made you into peoples and tribes, so that you may get to know one another. Surely the most noble of you in the sight of Allah is the most righteous among you. 
Allah is truly all knowing, all aware. Throughout to our room, verse 22. And one of his signs is the creation of the heavens and the earth, and the diversity of your tongues and colors. Most surely there are signs in this for the land. Try to look, man, verse 33. O oh, mankind, fear your Lord and fear a day when no father will avail a son, nor will a son avail his father at all. Indeed, the promise of Allah is truth. So let not the worldly life delude you and be not deceived about Allah by the deceiver. Aslam wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. A big thank you to Hassan Abdurrahman and Jamil Farida for the short recitation from the Holy Quran and also for the beautiful rendition of the recitation. Jazakumallah khairan. We are proud of both of you. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala increase both. I mean, uh, the theme of this diversity as the creator's design, lessons for Nigeria, diversity as the creator's design, lessons for Nigeria. We could see from the recitation we just had that the students pick different verses of the Quran that touch on tolerance, diversity, unity, love, and all that. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless the two of them. Allahumma amin. And next on our list of programs is recognition of the dignitaries. We have a number of uh, big personalities in the house, and I'm going to recognize them in no particular order, but very importantly, I'm going to start with our father, our role model in Islam, a man of many parts, the chairman of the Board of Governors of Crescent School, and the chief host of today's program, our father, Dr. Jibril Abdullah Oyekan, MFR. Sir, can, you, can we just hear your voice, sir? Salam alaikum, sir. Salam alaikum. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Jazakum Allah, okay, sir. We are, we are indeed happy to have you in our meet, sir. Thank you very much, sir. And also to be welcome to this program is our father and the man who is going to feed us with um, his knowledge today, inshallah, the guest lecturer of uh, uh, Fadila to Sheikh, Justice Abdurrahim Ahmed Saiz. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. wa Kiran. He was in, in fact, ahead of time. Jazakumullah wa Kiran, may Allah reward you. And also to be recognized here today is the chairman of uh, Parent Teacher Association of Crescent Schools in the person of Alaji Aliyu Gudaji. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi sir. Assalamu alaikum Alaji Gudaji, are you there? Abi wa alaikum wa salam. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you for your punctuality. Jazakumullah Karen. And also uh, to be recognized here today uh, is our uh, host. Uh, that is the host of today's program. I, I said earlier that our father, Dr. Jibril Oyeka, uh, is the chief host, and then we have the host, and that is the head of schools in the person of Mr. Shafi Ayori Day. Salam alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. And then we have around him many co hosts, many co hosts, uh, and then I'm going to start with. Um, a uh, leader in the college and the person of Al Ustaz uh, Mahmoud Abdul Ghani, that's the principal of the college, and also the deputy head of schools, college affairs, Al Ustaz Mahmoud Abdul Ghani. Salam alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. You are all welcome to this year's edition of our annual Ramadan lecture. Thank you very much. Another co-host is the head of EYFS and Elementary Affairs, our technical man for today. Uh, that is Ustaz Mustafa Salahuddin. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Jazakumullah khairan. MashaAllah. I can also see the supervisor for elementary uh, in our means. That is Mr. Mansuru. 
uh, Sani. Assalamu alaikum. We hear your voice too. Assalamu alaikum, Mr. Sani. Wa alaikum wa salam wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. Thank Mashallah. you so much. Also, also worthy of being recognized here today is the uh, deputy uh, supervisor for the elementary section. That is Mrs. Yusuf Bilkis. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi uh, Mrs. Salami Bilkis, rather. Mrs. Salami, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi. Wa alaikum wa salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Uh, the list is very long, but uh, time will not permit me to recognize everyone. But uh, if I have forgotten to recognize you and you know you deserve to be recognized, please forgive me. Okay, okay, I can see the vice principal of the college in the house. That is Mr. Suleiman Oyek Aoyes Sami. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa Thank you very much, sir. All, all, all the HODs. In the house, you all recognize all the teachers, all our parents, the beautiful, the supportive and cooperative parents of Crescent Schools. You all recognize. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless our children and may he grant all of us the blessings of this only month of Ramadan. Allahumma amin. I say assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Now, next on the list. Next on the list is for us to listen to the host of today's program to give us a short uh, welcome address. Uh, that is Mr. Shafin Ayonidi. Welcome address, sir. Audu billahi mina shaitan rajim. Bismillahi rahman rahim. Alhamdulillah, alladhi hadana lihada. Alhamdulillah, alladhi alhamana bishari Ramadan. Alhamdulillah. Wa salatu ala ashraf al-anbiya wa imam al-mursalin sayyidina wa nabiyina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa ashabi wa sallim. Ma ba'd. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. On behalf of the Board of Governors of uh, Crescent Schools, 1004 Housing um, Estate, Victoria Island, it led, led by Dr. Abdullah Jibril uh, Oyekan and um, management staff, parents, and students of the school. We are all welcome to this uh, edition, the first edition of our annual Ramadan lecture, um, which will be delivered by no other person than uh, our very good friend and um, a reliable uh, partner in person of Justice Abdul Rahim Ahmad Sai. So we hope that inshallah, it is it's going to be a, bene a very beneficial lecture to all of us. So we are welcome to this uh, lecture. And uh, this lecture, as we know that every come up with a topical uh, lectures, topical issues, it is meant to be our own token, um, token contribution to nationwide uh, discourse, discourse on uh, our existence as a nation. We all know that the speed at which some, someone runs for safety will be dependent on the speed of whatever is chasing it. If what is chasing the person is a toad, the speed will be different from when a lion is chasing uh, that person. What we're trying to say is that um, as a stakeholder, and as a responsive and a responsible a stakeholder for that matter, our school sees the need for us to contribute our own quota towards uh, the cohesive uh, existence of Nigeria as a nation. That is why we have come up with this topic and uh, we bring this fit to no other person than the Justice Sai to do justice to this uh, particular topic. We pray to Almighty Allah to make it beneficial not only to us, to us the attendees, attendees, to the nation as a whole, so that uh, at the end of the day, we all end up having a rewarding time. So, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thank you very much, sir, for the short for the short but uh, apt uh, welcome address, Jazakumullah uh, Khairan. All is now set for today's program. With our welcome address, we know that we are indeed ready for this uh, Ramadan lecture. Uh, before we 
also, we, before we move to the main lecture, it's also very important that we listen to the chief host of today's program. And that is our father, uh, Dr. Abdullah Jibril Oyekan. Our father is also going to give us his opening remarks. Bismillah. Sir. Assalamu alaikum, sir. Opening remarks by the Chief Osa. Assalamu alaikum. Can uh, our father, Dr. Yeka, can you, can you hear me? Please unmute yourself. Okay, I think I need to check first if he's in the, in the house. Uh, let me check. I'm not very sure our father is around now. Maybe while we are waiting for him, we can move on to the next item on the list, which is a recitation of um, a beautiful poem uh, written by one of our students in SS2, SS2 girls class. Uh, that is uh, Bashir Juma Arifa, uh, a student of Crescent uh, College. So Bashir Arifa. Yes, sir. Assalamu alaikum to our um, today I'll be talking on this, the, this United Nations. Remember those times we walked in harmony, dethroned the white men who had taken over our land. Remember the Cold War that had cut us and how our different languages didn't keep us apart. Remember when the world was breaking, we had ourselves together ready for a battle. To have us the same, the oneness we were, we were uncivilized. We held skin different from the white man's skin. Remember when they are taking us as slaves, had us colonized, and kept us prisoners in our own country. We sang all day. Even when there was no hope left, we cried. Even when we had no chance in defeating this man with weapons, we stood as one. Maybe that was what made other countries savor what we had, because we're too strong to be apart. We were a beauty right from our skin to our very heart. We never sinned. We were the untouched creatures of the mighty God. So the white man tried to destroy us all. One by one, they came took us to their land, tried to make us one of their own, had us cultivate their lands. Remember when we had gained our independence and we're now free from bondage. Remember our leaders toasted with glasses of divide. We at our happiest while watching the white men leave. Not even a single tear was shed. For they promised us freedom if we helped them fight a the world battle. Now we're on our own, but we fell. As we grew close to the wicked passion of the whites, our leaders wanted the country all to themselves and so they fought. The hold of political power is what they wanted. They forgot the cold past of our heroes and how we had dug up graves for them to have a long race. Now we led their efforts to vain, all because of our selfishness and greediness. We lost our once unified homeland by killing one another for our selfish gain, forgetting the diversity that upheld us as we ended up divided. Nigerians, all their compatriots, now is the time to be united, not disjointed. Now is the time to give love and life a chance. Now is the time to be great and strong through diversity. Hausa, Yoruba, Igbo, Edo, Ibibio, let Nigerianness come first. Thank you. MashaAllah. Thank you very much, Arifa. Let Nigerianness come first. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you. That was a beautiful uh, poem there. Jazakallah khair. And she wrote it, I have to say that she wrote the poem uh, purposely for this program. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you. She's one of the uh, literature students of Crescent Schools and she promised to write this poem and she did. Mm -hmm. And what a beautiful, what a beautiful poem uh, it was. Jazakallah khairan. Now, I wouldn't know whether our father is around now. If Dr. Now. Alhamdulillah, sir, I would like to listen to you, would like to give you, uh, would like you to give uh, opening remarks. Dr. Jibril, you can, sir. Would like to have your opening remarks, sir. Bismillah, Sami Ali Minashi Tony Rajim. Bismillah, Rahman Rahim. Alhamdulillah, Aladi Hadan Ali Hadan, Umakun Ali Nadia, Lola and Hadan Allah. Mashallah to was Salam Ala Ashraf Rumusalin. Hadimi and Bia said no Molana Muhammad ibn Abdullah. Wala Ali was Abihi. What Abihi know what Abihi and Besani Layo Medin. But 
Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Um, our distinguished uh, guest speaker, the members of uh, Board of Governors of Fraser Schools present, the head of schools, the deputy heads, distinguished uh, members of staff of Fraser School, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, you are most welcome to this year's Ramadan lecture program. And uh, we thank uh, Justice Abdurrahim Sai for uh, coming all the way from Quara to deliver to this uh, lecture. May Allah reward you abundantly. Amen. The topic uh, um, of the lecture, like everything that we believers do, inevitably has to be linked with our declaration of faith, la ilaha illallah, that there is none worthy of worship except Allah. And we as his creatures, are created to be on this planet, you know, with a purpose, and that purpose is to worship him. The true Muslim is the one who declares for the beloved of Shaitan Irohim. In the Salati wa Nusuki wa Moyaya wa Mamati Lelayla Bilala me. La Sharika Ubidalika Mitu Muslim. Verily, my salat, my sacrifices, my living, my dying, deny it all for Allah. He has no partners. You know, and that is what I have been commanded to, and I am foremost among the Muslims. So we have to link our being here with the purpose of our creation. The niyat with which we come to this lecture also will determine whether it's going to be accepted as ibadah, that we are fulfilling the purpose for which we are created. So I hope that every one of us is minded to come here to please Allah by attending this lecture and hoping that the lecture will put him further on the path of Siratul Mustaqim, on the, on the straight path, following the guidance that Allah has laid down for living. We must always link our activities with you know, the pleasure of our Creator so that it be accepted as a burden for us. I do not want to uh, uh, preempt the lecturer uh, uh, by going any further, but uh, I, I do hope that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will guide him in his delivery and that we will all you know, uh, be educated and fully benefit from the lecture, inshallah. I wish all of us 
Ramadan Kareem and pray that Allah will see out through this and many more Ramadans and uh, may he accept all our efforts as Ibadah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Ameen. Wa alaikum wa rahmatullahi Thank you so, so much, sir. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala preserve you for greater services to Izin. Thank you very much. That was indeed uh, an inspiring speech from our father there. And then to the prayer that our father just offered, we all say, Allahumma ameen. Thank you very much, sir. Jazakumullah uh, wa Next on the list is the main business of the day, uh, which is for us to listen to the lecture. Uh, earlier, I have announced that the theme for this year's program is diversity as the creator's design, lessons for Nigeria. That is the theme for this year's program. And the person who is going to do justice to this topic uh, is a known personality, uh, an, an erudite scholar. So it is very important that um, we give a short citation of the of the speaker so that um, the younger generations in the house like me uh, will further motivated to want to be like him. Uh, Honorable Justice Abdurrahim Ahmed Sai is a caddy of the Sharia Court of Appeal, Kwara State, Nigeria. Prior to his appointment, he was a legal practitioner and consultant of about two dec decades at the bar he was a principal partner, A.A. Sai and Co. Keys Chambers, Lekki Scheme 1, Lagos, and Cardi Independent Sharia Panel of Lagos State. He earned his law degree in common and Islamic laws, combined honors, from Usman Danfodio University, Sokoto, and holds a certificate on improving personal effectiveness from the Lagos Business School, Pan-African University. He is a proprietor of Arkham House School, Lekki Lagos. Also uh, is the founder and pioneer CEO of Clepat Islamic Center, Lekki Lagos, and a member of the advisory committee of experts, ACE, Sharia Advisory Committee, Sterling Bank, PLC, non entrance bank, a non entrance banking. He has authored a number of works and has to his credit several valuable and high profile lectures and presentations. He has a great passion for impactful impartation and strong bias for Islamic law, especially the relevance and um, uh, the relevant and effective application of Islamic law within the context and dynamics of contemporary intricacies. Distinguished girls, dear parents, ladies and gentlemen, I present to you uh, erudite scholar, today's lecturer in the person of Honorable Justice Abraham Stai. Over to you, sir. In alhamdulillah. نحمده تعالى ونستعينه ونستعديه ونستهديه ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا انه من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان سيدنا Uh, I want to appeal that we all um, the activate our video, please. Okay. وشر الأمور محدثاتها فإن كل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة. We give thanks to Allah subhanahu wa taala. We praise Him, we thank Him, we glorify His name. We 
testify in absolute terms to its oneness and to the prophet messengership of our teacher, model, guide, exemplar, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. We beseech Allah to continue to shower his blessings abundantly and perpetually on the soul of our noble prophet, those of his household, the entirety of his noble companions and all the believers who have continued to find his clear path till Allah inherits the heavens and the earth. The chief host and the chairman both of governor of uh, Christian schools, our father, our Fadila Sheikh, Dr. Jibri Abdullah Oyeka MFA, the head of school, the deputy head of schools, all the principal officers and staff of Christian schools, uh, distinguished parents and distinguished participants, brothers and sisters in Islam, I greet us on the Islamic greeting. Sayyidina Salaam Alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. Uh, it's a great pleasure to be my very valued brethren in the game on this occasion. And I'm also particularly uh, delighted at the choice of topic that has been uh, chosen for discussion. For there could have been no other better time to speak on this topic and even more loudly than this peculiar time that we are in. We pray Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to lead us aright as a people, even as individuals. We pray Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to keep us guided always and to particularly lead us aright as a people and citizens of the great country, Nigeria. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, the topic of discussion today also represents another area where many believers have been challenged in their faith. I, I must say that many of us may have also lost their demand because the topic has touched on a very important tenet of the religion upon which the Quran has been very eloquent and which had of course received very high attention of the Messenger of Allah and also very strong emphasis in his dawah in his lifetime. Therefore, not taking the right position on the subject of today may not just constitute maybe a wrong or, or something blameworthy, but may also go to the root, even of the faith of anyone who claims shahada uh, in the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and has also professed to the uh, prophet to the messengership of Muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. It is uh, to be noted that what constitutes the right belief of every Muslim is to, be is to ensure always that all that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has Uh, and joined us with the glorious Quran, ascribed themselves to the deen of Islam, to go out to blatantly set themselves up. I mean, in, in Contest my dear brothers and sisters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Diversity as the lessons for us as Nigerians. Let us first of all understand that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is never limited in his capacity, in his capability. If Allah had wanted to create the entire humanity and to make them monolithic in all respects, whether in their race, whether in their tribe, whether in their color, whether even in their religion, whether in their orientation, whether, whether, 
It, like, in, all, in all those things that have divided us across, you know, several divides, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is always capable of doing that. So if Allah has chosen to do otherwise, we must always realize that that definitely must have like. been for no other reason than for certain important Allah says in the glorious Quran, وَلَوْ شَاءَ اللَّهُ لَجَعَلَ النَّاسَ أُمَّةً وَاحِدًا وَلَا يَزَلُونَ مُخْتَلِفِينَ إِلَّا مَنْ رَحِمَ رَبُّكْ وَلِذَلِكَ خَلَقَهُمْ وَتَمَّتْ كَلِمَةُ رَبِّكَ لَأَمْلَأَنَّ جَهَنَّمَ مِنَ الْجِنَّةِ وَالنَّاسِ أَجْمَعِينَ Allah says, وَلَوْ شَاءَ اللَّهُ If Allah had wanted, لَجَعَلَ النَّاسَ أُمَّةً وَاحِدًا Allah would have created the entire humanity as one single community. One single community without any diversity. So, and, and if Allah had not done that, then we should realize that there is a hikmah behind that. For Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does all that he does based on some divine wisdom that can never be fallible. There are many ways in which people can find themselves in division. Uh, one important way is to find ourselves divided along the line of religion. And we shall take each head one by one. The fact that people have professed to different types of religions doesn't mean that that should result definitely in warfare or, or in hostility. No. Allah Azza wa Jalla has always maintained in the glorious Quran. That's in Surah to Taghabun. It is He, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who has created us. And among us, there will be kufar. And among us as well, there would also be people who will be mu'min. That is the design of Allah. In the verse quoted earlier, Allah has also said, Walau sha Allahu, la ja'alad nasa ummatan wahida. If Allah had wished, He would have made the entire humanity one single religious group. But the nature that Allah has allowed to run its course without any interference is that mankind would always fall into disputation. And it is the design of Allah subhanahu when he says, that the word of Allah, your Lord, O Muhammad, because it, there was tendency as well for the Prophet sallam, to uh, become overzealous at some point when the enthusiasm was so much on the high side that the messenger of Allah was almost even injuring himself, I mean, exposing himself to all kinds of harm and hurt, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had to place him on the path of caution. Uh, we have similar verses like, we had al hadith asafa that two of such verses in the Quran that oh Muhammad, would you be killing yourself? Would you be exposing yourself to, to, to destruction over the fact that the people unto whom you are you are calling or people whom you are calling upon are not responding as you have desired to the message? That shouldn't be a reason for you to kill yourself. Why? What the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has been perfected. That what? That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will definitely fill the jahannam, fill the fire of hell with mankind and with jinn. In another verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَوْ شَاءَ اللَّهُ لَجَمَعَهُمْ عَلَى الْهُدَى if Allah had wished, he would have also gathered humanity totally together on one guidance. O Muhammad, do not be of the ignorant. It is the ignorant person that will think that the ideal thing is that we are just one. Whoever has been so intolerant to diversity, to difference, is only exhibiting nothing but ignorance. And that was the warning that Allah gave the message of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Do not be of the ignorant ones who would be too intolerant 
to relating to managing people with whom they share many differences. In another verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَوْ شِئْنَا لَآتَيْنَا كُلَّ نَفْسٍ هُدَاهَا if we, have, if we had wished, we would have given every soul its guidance. We would have been able to make sure that to every soul, we've been able to give. But But of course, the matter had been settled with Allah that I shall surely fill the fire of hell, both with mankind and with the jinn. So to anyone who wants to be realistic and having known the position of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that will never change, we should of course have, have understood from that point that it will only amount to even sinfulness because Allah will not alter his position. One of the things that is very important for us all to know about Allah is the constancy of the position of Allah Azza wa Jalla. And Allah having declared this position clear, which position is not open to any change, whoever is calling on Allah under the, the, plat on the platform of whichever religion should just try to do his bit. For in the end, the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be done. In some other cases, it may be tribal difference. Um, maybe different languages. Maybe we may also have belonged to different race. And all these have also caused problems yesterday and today. So we are not even hopeful whether it's going to cease in a short while with humanity generally. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said in the Lord's Quran, Surah al Hijrat, A'udhu billahi min ash rajim Inna khalaqnakum min dakarin wa unsa wa ja'alnakum shu'udahu wa qaba'ila lita'arafu Inna akramakum inda Allahi atqakum Inna akramakum inda Allahi atqakum It is we Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that has created you from the beginning from a single soul from the soul of our father Adam and from the soul of our mother from out of whom we created our mother Hawa وَجَعَلْنَاكُمْ شُعُوبًا وَقَبَائِلًا لِتَعَارَفُ And we had also created you into nations and tribes into tribes and ethnic groups of all sorts لِتَعَارَفُ that you may recognize one another that you may have things to share among one another that you may have exchange of values among one another for the existence would not have been interesting at all if Allah had created all humanity in a single manner, so that we don't find any difference with one another. There is nothing by which a tribe has been distinct from another tribe, then it would have been a very dull and boring existence. But when we travel, what makes things interesting to us? What makes us feel some kind of a, a feeling of enrichment is, is because we feel that we are making discoveries and we are also led adding to our bulk of knowledge because learning is not just by turning pages of paper. We would see things from different perspectives and we would see the diversities while we would acknowledge our weaknesses in some respect. We would also be acknowledging our strengths as well. By the time we rub ourselves, we come in comparison with some others that are different from us. Allah says that is the difference, that is the wisdom behind him creating us in different tribes, in different nations. In Surah to Rum, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has also made it clear there. When min ayatihi khalqu samawati wal ard wa qtilafu al sinatikum wa ayatikum wa alwanikum inna fi thalika la ayatin li qawmin lil alimin inna fi thalika la ayatin lil alimin out of the signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is that he has created the heavens and the earth. And he has also created humanity in different colors and different tribes. Why? At the end, Allah says, Inna fi la lil alimin. In the diversity we have in our racial differences, our language differences, 
and in all the other differences by which we differ from one another, there is sign in there. In fact, there are signs in, in those differences. For those who know, for the knowledgeable ones, for those who are informed. And this further corroborates the, um, would I say, the correction, the subtle correction that I had referred to earlier, that Allah was also warning the messenger of Allah when he was getting overzealous. Do not be of the ignorant, O Muhammad, because it is never the design of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that humanity be monolithic. And sometimes you may even wonder why do people even fall into all kinds of differences. Yes, if we are different in colors, that we can even understand that. Sometimes it is just schism that is arbitrary. You just find people of the same religion, people of the same and to create a divide among themselves and then set up themselves as, as warring factions against each other. Sometimes politics may polarize people who are in all senses are, 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 are one. They are in perfect unity. People who in all senses are in perfect unity, sometimes Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you can just see the fact that they, they begin to divide. It, it could be the same brother, even from the same family, falling into different political parties, and then they turn the family into another battleground. Sometimes it could even be on the basis of things so senseless. I'm sorry to say that, but just not to offend the passion of those of us who are fans of one football club or the other. So we, we have seen people face one another with violence just because they are fans of different football groups. Even within the same religion called Islam, people will just find a way to cause some schism and differences among themselves. I am not even talking about when there is a, a sort of ideological conflict or ideological divide. I'm not talking about the Sunnis against the, 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 the Sufis. No, even among the Sufis, even come to the fold of those who say, we are the we, we are this, there would always be something else. You just find a way and then you just see people being polarized, factionalizing at the, at the, same, at the same time, all this is to tell us that there is nothing causing this except that we have, we have failed to be sensitive to certain things. The design of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is to always refer us back to the root that has united us. But we have an enemy. Don't forget that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has always warned humanity. Alam ahad ilaykum ya bani adam alla ta'budu shaytan innahu lakum aduwun mubin I have always took, taken covenant from your children of Adam that you shall not serve the devil for the devil is indeed unto you and to mankind an open enemy. There is no one that is responsible for enforcing on mankind all this feeling of division, except our avowed enemy that does not want us united, that does not want us to stay in peace, that has not wished us well in any way. And this is one thing that, that, that mankind must be allowed to. As for our Lord and Creator, who is our loving God, calling himself Ahual Ghafur Wadud, the only thing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has wanted for us is that we remain one in unity. Allah says in Surah to Nisa, Ya ayyuhan nasu taqu rabbamu la khalaqaku min nafsin wahida. O mankind, regardless of the religion to which you have subscribed, once you belong to the family of humanity, this verse is addressed to you. Allah, our Lord and Creator, is saying, we have created you all from a single soul. Wa khalaqa min ha and from that single soul, we had also created his spouse. And from the two of them, Allah had caused to spread in the earth men and women 
of different diversities. Therefore, you fear Allah, your common God, your common creator, unto whom you owe your creation and you owe it not to anyone else. Well, Arham, that is what the Qul Arhama fear as well, the bond of kinship. Preserve it. We all owe it a duty of faith to ensure that the bond of kinship in humanity is preserved. And that is the ordinance of Allah. And that was why I had, I had commented in the opening that these issues we are talking about goes to the root of our faith. Because none will be taking contrary position on matters such as this, except he will be setting up himself in conflict with verses of the Quran and a hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Allah says, Wattaqul Arham, fear the bond of kingship. Before this bond of kingship is taken too far, we must first of all contextualize it in the particular context of the verse under discussion. Because we are Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has begun his talk, is about creating the entire humanity. Yeah, and you had nurse was what he addressed. So there is bond of kinship that you can trace by blood. No, in interpreting this verse correctly, we must first of all start our consideration of construing, of, of start our construction of the word al-arhama from al-arham fil insaniya in humanity, because that is what Allah, where Allah started from. Fear that bond. That is to say that when any human being finds another human being from any part of the world, what must come to his mind first and foremost, regardless of the religion of that man or woman, regardless of his race, he must first of all have the feeling that he's meeting with his brother or sister. If he fails to have this feeling, then he is somehow, by implication, setting up himself in contestation of the verse of the glorious Quran, and that has an implication on his creed. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala save us from that. The messenger of Allah sallallahu wa once had one of his companions uh, bragging of his uh, lineage and then addressing a, a black person in a way that sounded racial. The Prophet sallallahu wa told him right there that you still have within you remnants of jahiliyyah. That is to say that your Islam is not perfect yet. Even among us believers, that if, if, you, if you consider the farewell khutbah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, one of the, the issues that was emphasized in the Prophet's last khutbah was this. There is no superiority for any Arab over a non-Arab. There is also no supremacy for a non-Arab over an Arab. Illa bi taqwa. The only thing that makes us superior to one another in the sight of Allah is nothing but taqwa. If this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has wanted for us, and we have people in our society, subhanallah, I don't even know where to place it. Especially when a course has been led by people who are not even of faith. People who are disbelievers in the tenets of Islam. Let me be very point, 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 frank on this. And then we now have Muslims, not ordinary Muslims, alphas, ulamas, and would also come to the public even attired in their big turban, giving support and endorsement to a cause that will not even be fought with even things halal. Who is even going to lead this battle is some idolatrous person that only knows nothing but fetishism and that has only, re that has only relied on nothing but magical powers to fight a cause. And then you also find Muslims as well came behind such a person. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, that is a clear way of telling us that people are falling already into the traps of shaitan. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala save us. And we must tell us that the advice of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, 
Fatav shalu, fatav rabari hukum. Do not fall into unnecessary disputation. Fatav shalu. If you do that, you become weak as a nation. Nigerians should learn to integrate. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created us with all these diversities. It has only enriched us as a nation to have within our country different potentialities, different values, different capabilities, because each of those diversities have come, has come with its own uniqueness by which we should be proud to be a nation that is a repository of so many values. Therefore, we should know that in the interest of Allah, sorry, in the wisdom of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what Allah has taught us rather is at tajammur wa litihad, to come together and to be united under one and the same banner. That is where our strength lies. Rather than Nigeria talk of disintegrating, who is it that is talking about the concept in Debo wants to go separately? under one umbrella, uh, what's their call, their name, Biafra. And then some are also calling for uh, Odudua, Odudua nation. I mean, even if you look at the basis of how we have, they have even premised, they are founded, even their cause, they are completely not even baseless. Who can be too sure of the ancestral origin of any of us? Who tells us, who can tell you that the person calling himself a Yoruba person now, who speaks Yoruba, he is not of Fulani or from Hausa or even of Igbo origin. No one can say. The, the only thing that is settled that we cannot dispute is that we have a common source in humanity. And that is what the Quran has called on us onto. As a human being, you have three types of bonds, at least, that can connect you with another person. The first that is constant with all human beings is the bond of humanity, which we have talked about in Surah and Nisa. The second may be bond of blood, which we can relate, we can trace, traceable blood relationship. Who is my uncle? Who is my nephew? Who is my sister? Who is my mother? Who is my son? That is also embraced by, by the word al arhab in that verse. And of course, the brotherhood of religion. Many of us do not know that what the Messenger of Allah had attempted to achieve by his emphasis on religious brotherhood was to completely erase, if possible, neutralize or bring down to the barest minimum all the other kinds of brotherhood that were dividing humanity and that were causing problems. If brotherhood has been established on the basis of humanity, we know that Islam as a nation has its guidance and we have set of rules that would always regulate all our dealings and beliefs with others, even with nations that are not Muslims. Islamic law is so rich to the extent that it has provisions for relationship of Islam, even with nations that are, go and read about Ulum Musiyah. Therefore, there will not be problem if we emphasize brotherhood in humanity, sorry, in, in, in faith, because faith is regulated by the divine. Let me give a beautiful example. One Asma, Prince uh, Abibakar, if I, I can recall very vividly, uh, was one of those who immediately accepted Islam after he, her father and migrated with the Messenger of Allah to Medina. There was this message that she received from her mother, who then was still a kafira, and sent to her that she wanted to come and pay her a visit as a daughter. The, new, the young Muslim who was still very hot, blooded, you know, how it is when, you know, faith is overcharging sometimes, felt that there was something wrong about that and went to the messenger of Allah to complain his plight. Her complaint prompted a revelation of a verse. We are Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, لَا يَنْهَاكُمُ اللَّهُ عَنِ الَّذِينَ لَمْ يُقَاتِلُوكُمْ وَلَمْ يُخْرِجُوكُمْ مِنْ دِيَارِكُمْ أن تبروهم وتقصطوا إليهم إن الله يحب المقصطين سبحان الله الله سبحانه وتعالى has not prevented you believers Allah has not prevented you from the people who have not fought you on account of your faith 
and they have not driven you out of your homes on account of your faith, Allah has not prevented you from relating with them in kindness, from relating with them in goodness. And also from being fair to them, towards them. Inna Allah yuhibbul muqsiteen. For the people whom Allah loves and would always love will be people who are fair. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has even emphasized in the Surah Al-Ma'idah that even you share different religion, different tribe, or there is even a, a, some animosity, there is even a kind of a, a war, grudge between the two of you. It, it is not a reason why you must not be fair towards him. Allah says, وَلَا يَجْرِمَنَّكُمْ شَنَآنُ قَوْمٍ عَلَىٰ أَلَّا تَعْدِلُوا اِعْدِلُوا هُوَ أَقْرَبُ لِلْتَقْوَىٰ Even between you and him, there is some animosity. There, there is an issue. Allah says, let that not also make you a criminal. Even if you, you have felt that he had wronged you, let that not also make you also go in the wrong path. Be fair always. There is no piety where there is no fairness. Islam is totally against nepotism. And you know where all these things have, have driven us to? We compromise competence, even in, in assigning responsibilities, even public responsibilities of high importance on account of this is close to me, or we have issue with that, or we are rival community with that. When the Messenger of Allah has said, as reported by Ibn Khuz Ibn Khuzayma, rahimahullah, man walla min amri al-Muslimina amran, fa walla rajulan an qarabatin aw mahabbatin, wa huwa yajidu man huwa aslah lil muslimin, fa qad khana Allah wa rasulahu wal mu'minin. Whoever, in the course of appointing or assigning responsibility on the matter that concerns the ummah, and then assigns that responsibility to a man on the basis of qaraba, affinity, nearness, Aw mahabba, the love that he has for such person, who oh, is my man, is is is, is of my race, whatever. Wa huwa yajidu, man huwa aslah lil muslimin. Why he could find an alternative that is in all senses better for the people? Fakad khan Allah, such had betrayed Allah, wa rasula, and had also betrayed the Messenger of Allah, and had also betrayed even the generality of the Muslim ummah. My dear brothers and sisters, and Nigerians all together, what we should rather be thinking is to see how we can integrate as a sub-region. We should be holding conferences and referendum to see how Benin Republic, Togo, Cote d'Ivoire, and all those countries will come together and form a republic that will be larger in might. There is no sense in disintegration. There is no sense in, in breaking up ourselves. Look. By the time we have succeeded in factionalizing ourselves into greatest into factions, then sub-regions within those factions will also become, have another round of rivalry. And at the point, it's also going to come down and descend so to become a private one. So it's now going to be a, I, I -ism. One lecturer of mine will say me-ism. Me in Hausa means I. So it's, it's then going to be struggle of individual, it's going to now be conflict of individual interest at the end of the day. There is not going to be sincerity in that. Nigeria is not the only nation in the world that has so many divides across ethnic groups, across some other nations are there and they are able to manage theirs effectively. We are only looking at them as one but they have their heritages, their, their, their ancestral region, all different. Even if a course would even have Hello, I think uh Salaam Alaikum. Salaam Alaikum. Yeah. So, so, uh, 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 so, u
man qatala ala asabiyya wa laysa minna man mata ala asabiyya whoever comes to the struggle of tribalism any cause that is based on our tribe our group our, our ethnic group our language is a completely a haram cause that a muslim must not be part of and this is also a message even to non muslims that may have been may be partaking in, in this program or that this message may reach on if you are christians let us go back to the book of genesis in the glorious uh, sorry in the holy bible and you'll see that you don't have any message there that is different from what the quran is saying the fact that we are we have our differences doesn't mean we are entirely different in all its ramifications that is why you have issues as simple as hijab a muslim wanting to exercise his, her, her fundamental right and some others rising against that muslim wants muslims wanting to apply their islamic commercial law in the aspect of banking in the aspect of insurance must we just fight just because we are different? no that shouldn't be we should rather be objective when a christian is on a course that is not unrighteous it is obligatory on the muslims to run around around him and give him support the message of allah sallam recalled a group a, a freedom fighter group in the jahiliya days that had taken it upon themselves to fight for the right of the distress he remembered that he was part of them he participated and he said while in islam if he could also see similar group now he would also work in cooperation with them there are a universal standard for for values for for virtues that should not even be colored at all with religion truthfulness honesty these are virtues that are that are universal so sacrifice to humanity so these are areas we are all human beings should come together the message of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam was in medina and met a divergent community tribal differences religious differences very cosmopolitan and he was able to bring everybody to the round table and get them to enter into some treaty some kind of a, that would have, maybe we can call that uh, the, the, the first cosmopolitan constitution of a nation in the history of mankind i don't think that is said what that preceded that and the prophet sallam lived up to his word the christians lived under his leadership the, the jews lived and if, if there were issues it was not based on the fact that people were divergent on their religion my dear brothers and sisters this is the message of islam and this is what we should popularize and i may want to suggest at this hour to all those who are involved in dawa at this point in time i do not think there is any message we should give enough emphasis than messages such as the message of uh, of quran chapter 4 verse number 1 and similar other verses in the quran let the world hear the muslims as the forces and the agent of unity while others can see to what extent at god even the former president of the united states how he is embarrassed himself even globally i mean with racism and that shows you how uncivilized people are but let muslims be vanguard of this value that humanity is one and all human beings are all equal and we are all equally endowed some may have been fortunate they have been advantaged and some may have been disadvantaged but the fact still remains that humanity is one uh, this is my uh, message for the time being inshallah we pray that may allah uh, bless the little that we've been able to share aqulu qawli hadha astaghfirullah alazim li wa lakum assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Wa alaikum as wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is more than little, mashallah, a brilliantly presented lecture. Very clear, very lucid, highly informative. Jazakumullah wa khayran. We have learned a great deal from you this afternoon, sir. We wish we could extend your time so that we we'll learn more from you. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you immeasurably and handsomely for this beautiful uh, service that you have just rendered. Thank you. Beautiful and copious quotations from the Quran, from the Hadith, and from other sources. 
May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala preserve you for great, uh, greater services to humanity and uh, also to his day. Allahumma ameen. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, without much ado, we move to uh, the next item on the list, which is for us to have just a few questions. A few questions. Our time is fast spent, and I want to leave this place uh, as soon as possible, inshallah. So I'm going to hand over this segment to Mr. Salahuddin. It has been a technical man. Mr. Salahuddin, uh, over to you uh, from now on. Are you there, Mr. Salahuddin? Can I'm you hear me? I'm very much here now. Alhamdulillah. It's all right. Allah, now, assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. It's been a great pleasure to be here. And I'm particularly delighted to be part of this program uh, from the very beginning, uh, having it that uh, the, the anchor person, our guest lecturer, is my sheikh and my teacher. Alhamdulillah, it's been a while that I listened to his lecture, you know, with all the COVID issue. Um, it has actually changed a lot of things. Alhamdulillah that we are all part of this. And I have really, really gained so much from the presentation today. Once again, we say Jazakumullah khairan. And now that we're going to questions and answers, if we have um, questions, I would like uh, those having questions to use the hand raising feature of Zoom. So once you raise your hand, I will be able to uh, call you and ask you to unmute yourself so that you can present your questions. And those who prefer to send in the questions uh, in type form, you can use the chat box to send your questions. We'd like to do this as quickly as possible because I'm sure uh, Sheikh will definitely have some other engagements uh, so that we can round up very quickly. Oh, yes, he has even said that he's due for another lecture now. All right, let's make it snappy. Do we have questions from any of the participants? Questions, questions. Let's try and do this within a minute or two. Okay, it appears to me that we might not be having questions because no one has raised their hand so far. The message is coming in our messages of appreciation to our guest lecturer. Okay, so, um, well, let's take it that we do not have uh, questions. Uh, it means that everything said by our dear lecturer is well understood. Okay, alhamdulillah, I mean, that's, we really, really save our time. So we can move on very quickly. Now, once again, we say Jazakumullah khairan. Since we're not having questions, I'm sure if, there are, if questions come in later, we might just have to find a way to send the questions to him and communicate the response uh, to uh, participants, inshallah. So right now we go on to the next item on, uh, in the program of events, and that is item 10, uh, that's the vote of thanks, and this will be taken by the principal and DHOS College Affairs in person of Ustaz Mahmoud Abdulgeni. Ustaz Mahmoud. Now, Bismillah. Mina Shaitan al Rajim. Bismillah al Rahman al Rahim. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Alladhi bin Imatihi Tatim Musalehat. Alhamdulillah ذي الحمد والثناء Alhamdulillah رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على المبعوث رحمة للعالمين القائل من صنع إليكم معروفا فكافئوه فإن لم تجدوا ما تكافئون فادعوا له حتى تروا أنكم قد كافتموه Muhammad ibn Abdullah wa ala alihi wa sahabihi ajma'in. Alhamdulillah. We thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by whose leave successes are recorded. We thank him subhanahu wa ta'ala for making this lecture a successful reality. We particularly thank Justice Abdurrahim Ahmad Sayi who has actually done justice to the topic given to him. Alhamdulillah. Crescent schools, being a school bequeathed to the Muslim Ummah, is our collective heritage. The guest lecturer, as by his beautiful and highly impactful lecture, demonstrated his passion for the progress of the school and the uplift of the Dean of Islam. Uh, this he has done 
in addition to his status as a former parent of the school. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala appreciate him immensely on our behalf. Our deep appreciation goes to the members of the Board of Governors of Crescent Schools, led by Dr. Abdullah Jibiril Oyeka, MFR, that were part of this lecture. Alaji Kamar Bakrin, Chairman Finance Committee of the Board of Governors. Alaji FM Oyeka, former head of schools. Alaji Ali Ugudaji, a member of the PPPIC Committee of the Board and the PTA Chairman. Our esteemed parents that took time out of their uh, uh, busy schedule to be part of this meeting, we say to you all, Jazakumullah Khairan. Ustaz Mahmoud, are you there? Salaam alaikum. Salaam alaikum. You can go ahead with the event. Okay, I think it's still talking, but he might be having a network challenge from his end. Yeah. Ustaz Mahmoud, we can barely hear what you're saying now. Please unmute yourself, Ustaz Mahmoud. You are back on. Okay. Uh, at what point did you uh, miss me, Mr. Saladin? Uh, it should be like um, 10, 15 seconds ago. So you were sending um, words of appreciation. I think it was the point you mentioned the parents. Then we lost your audio. Okay. okay. So I think I was almost uh, concluding. That uh, okay. we appreciate we appreciate our parents that were part of the uh, lecture, our distinguished colleagues, our uh, student that joined us, and uh, we pray just as prayed by the board chairman, Doctor Abdullah Jibril Oyeka, MFR, while giving his opening remark that may Allah Subhanahu wa Taala count our participation in this lecture as an act of worship. Subhanaka Allahumma bihamdik nashhadu an la ilaha illa ant nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilaik. Now alhamdulillah jazakumullah khairan. We ask Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept all our dua. We ask him to make this Ramadan fast uh, the best we've ever experienced in our life uh, in in all our lives. We ask him to forgive all our sins and overlook our shortcomings. We ask Allah to reward our guest lecturer immensely mm -hmm. like it was mentioned earlier. He arrived in the lecture, in the virtual lecture room, about 30 minutes before time. So that is quite encouraging, and that was really uh, inspiring for us. It tells us that uh, as Muslims, we must be very conscious of time, especially when we carry the emblem of Islam. We should show that we are always time conscious. So beyond the words that he spoke to us, he also showed us with his example of uh, punctuality. So that should be a lesson for all of us, an extra lesson in addition to what we heard from him. We ask Allah to reward him abundantly and we ask Allah to bless every one of us. We ask Allah to make Crescent School grow from strength to strength. We ask him to make us uh, uh, be the best that we should be, uh, given the right value, the right education to the Muslim children and making them to be the best they can be. We ask Allah to make this Ramadan to be the best for us, to accept our dua, uh, to accept our prostration, our standing, our fasting, our sadaqah, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us success in the matters of this one hereafter. Rabbana taqabbal minna inna ka anta samiul alim. Watuba alayna ya maulana inna ka anta tawabu rahim. Wahdina wa fiqna ila al-haqqi wa ila tariqi al-mustakim. Allahumma ati anfusana taqwaha wa zakkiha anta khayru man zakkaha. Anta waliyuha wa maulaha. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasanatan wa fi al-akhirati hasanatan wa kina adhaba al-nar. سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك أشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت أستغفرك وأتوب إليك والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته وعليكم السلام ورحمة الله وبركاته